Upon this moment, we already finished our discussion about the relationship between a change in the price and、um, a change in quantity demanded. Okay, or more precisely, I should say, a percentage change in price and a percentage change in quantity demanded.、Um, here in this video, we're going to talk about other elasticities of demand. Okay. Uh, more specifically, we're going to look at two of them.、Uh, the first one is the income elasticity of demand. Okay, so、um, similar to the way we define the price elasticity to demand here, we're looking at the relationship between the percentage change in income and percentage change in quantity demanded. Okay,、uh, formally speaking,、uh, the income elasticity of demand. Means how much the quantity demanded of a good responds to a change in consumers' income, right? And、um, mathematically, we use E、uh, superscript D and subscript I, which stands for income. Okay,、um, the, equals the percentage change in quantity demanded over percentage change in income, right? So here we're just going to use a very straightforward example to show you how we could calculate、uh, the income elasticity of demand. Okay. Now suppose this is a demand schedule、um, for cheeseburgers, okay, on a local market, and、um, what you find is,、um, you know, different、uh, or slightly different from the previous demand schedule. Here, the first column is the price. The second column is quantity demanded when income is ten thousand dollars. Okay. Now we do have the additional column here, which show you shows you the quantity demanded when income is thirty thousand dollars. Okay. So that's the only difference.、Um, but again, we still try the same price levels as low as one dollars, as high as eight dollars per cheeseburger. Okay. Now here,、um, please calculate your income elasticity of demand as your income increases from ten thousand to thirty thousand dollars if the price is two dollar. So here you may find that there are three variables we're actually dealing with. The first one is we need to look at the change in quantity demanded. Right. The second one is the income. So we go up from ten thousand to thirty thousand, and the third one is we have to, you know, fix the price to be able to calculate the income elasticity of demand. Right. All right. Let's do it. So the percentage change in quantities when income goes up is going to be changing、uh, QD over QD. So here again, when price is two dollars、uh, per unit, then、uh, when income is ten thousand, the quantity demanded was five hundred. When income goes up to thirty thousand, then quantity demanded rose to six hundred.、Uh, I'm sorry, sixteen hundred. So we use the final quantity demanded sixteen hundred minus the initial one five hundred divided by the initial one. Once again, the denominator is the initial level. Okay, so you will find that、uh, the percentage change in quantity demanded is two hundred twenty percent. All right, and、uh, similarly, we can find the percentage change in income. Okay, and we use the final. Level of the income thirty thousand minus the initial one ten thousand divided by ten thousand, so the percentage change in income is two hundred percent. Okay, now we plug these two back into the income elasticity of demand formula, so it's going to be two hundred twenty percent over two hundred percent. So the income elasticity of demand is going to be one point one percent. Oh, I'm sorry, one point one. In other words, when your income goes up by one percent, your、um, quantity demanded will go up by one point one percent. Okay. Now, as already mentioned, when we calculate this income elasticity of demand. We get to name a price, right? 
the price cannot change in this calculation. So um, here, let's try a different price level, okay? And uh, what is uh, the income elasticity of demand as your income increases from 10,000 to 30,000 if the price is $4 per cheeseburger, okay? Now here, I'm gonna leave this as the practice for you guys. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna show you uh, the calculation here. However, before you do that, I would suggest you to pause the video and think about or, or guess if the income elasticity of demand would stay the same or would be different. Okay, think about this. At the different price levels, income elasticity of demand is supposed to be different or it should stay the same. All right. And um, another question I would like to raise uh, we, for our class discussion later is what does it mean if the income elasticity of demand is negative? Okay. So here, you know, the numerical example we uh, already discussed, we find the income elasticity is 1.1, right, which is positive. Could it be negative? For example, could it be negative 1.1 or negative 0.5? If it could, then what does a negative income elasticity of demand mean? Okay, think about this. What's the economic intuition and bring it to class? Uh, we're going to discuss it. Okay. All right. Uh, the second elasticity. Um, of demand we're going to discuss here is called cross price elasticity of demand okay specifically it's defined as how much the quantity demanded of a good responds to a change in the price of another good okay so it's not the price of the good it's the other the, another good now you may wonder you know why we're going to look at you know the change in the price of another good okay so here um, again this suggests that you know the two goods in question should be related in some way okay now here um once again i'm going to leave two questions for you guys to think about uh, the first one is, what does it mean if the cross price elasticity of demand is greater than zero? In other words, it's positive. Okay, what does that mean? So another way you can approach this uh, question is, um, again, go back to the definition. So the positive uh, cross price elasticity means when the price of another good goes up, quantity demanded for this good goes up as well. So what does that mean? What kind of relationship you find uh, between these two goods, okay? And of course, you know, the other way we can, um, you know, discuss this is, what does it mean if the cross price elasticity of demand is less than zero? In other words, it's negative. So what, what is going to be the relationship between these two goods, okay? Once again, um, I think it should be straightforward, and this is something we already discussed back in Chapter 4. But here we just use a different way. Um, we use the elasticity to, you know, rephrase um, uh, this relationship. All right, um, in the textbook, you will also find that uh, you know a lot of the discussions about the price elasticity of supply okay however i'm not going to talk about that um in this video um or i'm not gonna you know lecture that at all because once you read the book you will realize that you know the discussion is just so like almost the same okay like you replace uh demand with the supply then you know, in terms of the formula, calculation, uh, graphs are, are very similar. So I believe that, um, you know, it's appropriate for you guys to uh, check this out by yourself. Okay. 
All right, so here, uh, when it comes to the moment, we can wrap up our discussion of this chapter. All right, uh, so at the beginning of the chapter, we define and calculate the price elasticity of demand. Okay, and we also build the connection between the value or the magnitude of the elasticity of demand and the shape of demand curves. Okay, so we said that, you know, a steep demand curve means elastic or inelastic. It means that the price elasticity is greater than one or less than one, right? So that's what we discussed. And right after that, we look at the relationship between the price elasticity of demand and total revenue. And we said that this is the application of the pricing. I'm sorry, this is a, um, um, how we apply, you know, this uh, elasticity idea to the pricing strategy. Uh, businesses uh, used a lot in the real world. Okay, when they're trying to raise or lower their price, what's going to happen to their uh, revenue? Okay, and uh, we also mentioned there are three real world ap uh, applications and all of them are super interesting and i chose the second one to discuss in the video and left the other two for you guys to read okay uh, to learn by yourself and um earlier in this video we'll also talk about the income elasticity of demand cross price elasticity of demand okay and I left the price elasticity of supply for you guys to um, to check out by yourself. So here you would realize that um, upon this moment, we already spent three chapters talking about supply and demand, right? Chapters four, five, and six. Okay. So um, we're about to wrap up our discussion for supply and demand. As I said, this is a super, super important, okay? And in the syllabus, I also mentioned that chapter four, the supply and demand analysis is the single most important chapter of the semester, right? Um, so I hope upon this moment, you should have the a solid understanding of the supply and demand analysis, okay? Now, um, starting from the next uh, chapter, we're gonna talk about um, something else okay we're going to talk about um the overall economy and the circular flow diagram and um, another model graphical model called the ppf uh, production possibility frontier okay all right so that's it for this one